Hi garden friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Era and this is Gardening on Purpose. I garden in Georgia, Zone 8A, where I do gardening related videos. It is the end of April, which means it's time for a backyard tour. Let's get started. So guys, the garden has really, really come alive. Lots of plants are blooming, lots of plants are leafing out, and lots of plants are budded up and getting ready to put on a show. So as I enter the garden this way, from the west side of the house, um, I have two hanging baskets that I've been on this little hanging baskets kick and I actually did a video for this but then turned out that I was doing a lot of sniffling because my allergies were acting up so I didn't really like how it sounds so I decided not to publish it but I will do some new videos to show you how I did my hanging baskets guys coming through the arbor we have the amethyst falls wisteria this guys I bought from Lowe's on clearance two gallons for twelve dollars and it's absolutely gorgeous look at that it is not the invasive one and this is actually in a container so it will be contained it won't go to haywire and I'm really really loving the wisteria look at those purple blooms guys as I come through the arbor this is where I have my Maya lemon I have my three Japanese maples in containers. That's where they're gonna stay. I have just literally no space to put Japanese maples in the ground. And I have my peach and my cherry tree. The salvias are blooming. The daisies are budded up. And it's really, really exciting, guys. The rose marvel salvia. Then we have the um, Coneflower, I believe this is the Artisan series, and I have four of them in this bed, and they're all budded up. This bed up here also has white mountain daisies, and those are beginning to open. I love daisies, I love white daisies, and I love Shastas. These are absolutely amazing. These white mountain, again, clearance plant on Lowe's for $4 and for a 2.5 quart. So when you see clearance plants, pick it up because the next year it's gonna look like this, guys. White mountain Shasta daisy. Also on this side of the yard, guys, is one of the newer beds, and I extended it a little bit too. We also have more Rose Marvel Salvi in here. I've got it lined out with some lamb's ear right here, and then we have some Dutch irises here. I'm not sure how well they're going to do here because after 2 o'clock, these actually go in the sun. I'm sorry, in the shade. I've got a bunch of daylilies. I've got an invincible hydrangea. I've got verbena, which I love. This is the lollipop verbena. I've got three of those. This was from Home Depot when they have the three for 12 perennial sale last year. And I picked up three lollipops and the butterflies love them. The irises are doing great. One of them is blooming really nicely and one of them isn't. So here's the one that isn't. And then here's the other one that is blooming beautifully guys this is the German bearded iris and it has this bloom that came out this morning and then I have two blooms here waiting to come out in the next two or three days really really happy with that and both of them bloomed last year so I know that the other one that doesn't have any bloom on it right now I'm not worried too much it will be okay my candy tuft are still going strong. These are supposed to be only spring bloomers, I think. I'm not sure. But we are in the end of April. We are still spring, and they are still doing A-OK. -okay. This is one of the newest beds I have, and I'm still trying to figure out if this is what I really want in the end because it looks a little bit too boxy for me, but we'll, we'll have to soften those edges a little bit. Um, and in here, I actually have some daylilies that I bought bare root again, and I bought two lavenders from Walmart. They're not doing great, and you guys know that I've mentioned this a couple of times, lavender... Um, I don't know if I'm misplacing it, but this is going to be my third time buying lavender and it still doesn't look great. So I'm going to check to see. I'm going to keep an eye on it 
to see how it does this 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 season this one here is my Shasta daisies from another part of my yard that I actually dug up and divided. So, I mean, guys, I have so many Shasta daisies. I have no business buying any more Shasta daisies or any more white daisies in general. And then also in the bed, these day lilies here, again, bare root from Walmart back in February. And they are butted up, guys. They are butted up. And not only are they butted up, one of them actually is blooming. Look at this guy's, guy's here. I love this faint peach color. If I remember the name, I'll try to put it on the screen um, to, to help you out with that. But again, this is, I think I bought them for $5.42 at Walmart. Three in a pack and every last one of them is butted up. That's one thing about um, daylilies. People don't like them for whatever reason, but for me, they don't look as ratty as they look in other areas. They will stay evergreen in my yard. I'll cut them back and they will do just fine. They are so reliable. So here's a bloom. And then the others here are butted up. This should probably bloom tomorrow. In one of the main areas of the garden, guys, you guys know I have two huge beds in the center of the yard. Let me back up so you can have a little, a better view of it. And those red things you see here, you know what they are. They are double knockout roses and they are on fire, guys on fire no stopping them leaves look great they are completely butted up i have five of them yeah one and this one here i just transplanted not too long ago which is why it doesn't look as great as this guy here and then i have this guy down here and then two all the way down that way they are one of the most reliable plants in this yard guys i don't have to do anything to this thing it just does this and it's true the double knockout rose disease resistant nothing bothers this thing also in this bed guys i've got sedum i've got veronica speedwell i've got my favorite perennial autumn joy sedum and look at the daylilies guys again beer root from walmart these are not the first years though. These are their, this is a second year comeback. And look at that guys. The beer, you know how you, when you buy the beer root, it's like literally one little stem, like one little root. This is the second year. This is how this thing actually grows. I've got another um, Veronica. More cone flowers. Everybody's looking great guys. I've got Dolly is over here, Black Eyed Susans, Lilies, more Day Lilies. My um, Purple Sensation Alliums are not doing well at all. They're the, the edge of the leaves are browning and the actual bloom doesn't look as sensational as it, as it was supposed to look. Let me know how yours is doing. Purple Sensations Alliums. I bought these at Lowe's, uh, the, the bulb, and I planted them. And, and I planted them a couple of places around the yard, and they're all doing the same thing. They seem quite stunted. So let me know if you have Purple Sensation Allium and how it's doing. This is my bee balm. Looking really nice. As you know, bee balm is susceptible to, to, um, to, to mildew, so I try to give it some space between each plant. And these are all my daisies, between the amazing daisies from Proven Winners to Shasta Daisy to Mountain Daisies. They're all butted up, guys. Such a reliable perennial, guys. I might divide this one because this one's getting huge. All these are daisies. I, this is a spin top, um, I think it's Gallardia, a blanket flower. More daisies, guys. When they had that sale, I, for $4, I picked them up. And they've grown so well in my yard. And now I might have to divide and give away, which is always a great feeling for a gardener. More of the purple sensation allium that just do, doing the same thing. Brown edges and not very sensational blooms. I was really, really hoping that this would do well. More Veronica's here. 
and again a huge weed that I need to pull out like look how this thing is here and then I have of course the purple homestead verbena really really nice guys the back bed is looking great too what's in here we've got a uh, periwinkle pugster uh, butterfly bush we've got Leatrice we've got Adam's needle color guard we've got lamb's ear that's the Adam's needle the lambs here, again, transplants that have tripled in size. And all this area that looks kind of bare, it's not bare. This is all seedlings from my um, coneflowers. So I need to pull those seedlings out. They're not weeds. There's a lot of seedlings in here that I need to pull out. So this area is a big area full of coneflowers. I've got a dahlia that I bought. I mislabeled it, so I don't know what color that is, and I actually might move that lamb's ear. More Adam's Needle Color Guard. We got balloon flower right here. And guys, look at this white Gora. It is beautiful. Right against the red um, Barberry and the yellow Sunshine Ligustrum. I'm really, really liking this Gora. I have the pink Gora, so this is the pink Gora that I divided, so that's why it looks smaller than the white, but this one was not a clearance plant. This was a plant I bought from Lowe's for $7.48, and they are doing absolutely amazing. These are my mums, third-year mums, so don't throw away your mums, guys. They do come back, and they do bloom. So I've had, this is three years' worth of mums, and every year they bloom in the summer and the fall. I've got yarrow, guys. Yarrow is completely budded up. Got three of those. Clarence plant from Lowe's. I've got coreopsis, again budded up. Back there, we have the Pow Wow series coneflowers. Where I have the red, the, the cherry berry, and I have the Pow Wow white. So that's what that area is. And again, I need to thin those out because there's a lot of little seedlings in there that might appear to be weeds, but they are not. And again, more of the, set, the, the purple sensation alliums that I spread around the yard, none of them look good. So either I have a bad batch because different parts of the yard have different types of soil. And you guys know when I dig a hole, I always, always put um, um, pine bark soil conditioner in there. So I don't know why my alliums, I have them at like five different areas in the yard and all of them look not good. Next up guys, we have Cat's Meow Nepeta. And we've got the bee that's going in on it guys. Look at that. The bee is loving the nepeta. Again, this was a clearance plant. This is a proven winner's brand um, one, Cat's Meow. I think this was the smallest of all the nepeta brands because I think they have cat's pajamas and cat something else. But I have three and they're all doing great. Guys, look who's blooming. This is a second year um, Nepophia also known as Red Hot Poker. This was when I bought bare root from Walmart two years ago. And I was thinking that it was gonna bloom in the first year and it didn't. So it was kind of languishing in the yard, just creating a foliage and it takes up a lot of space. And then a couple of days ago, I began to see these things come out. Look at that guys. This is Red Hot Poker. It didn't say what type though. It's just those bare root things you buy, you buy from Walmart and I might have to move this thing because it does take up a lot of space. I'm not sure where we're going to put it because it needs sun and I don't have much more sun space. Um, but after waiting two years to bloom, I'm not giving this away. I'm not. I'm going to make it work for its money, guys. <laughs> this is Nephophia, also known as Red Hot Poker. I've got some more sedums in here and guys my purple flame phlox is blooming again this is a monrovia brand that was on sale for seven dollars at lowe's because you know the monrovia brands are usually a bit more expensive so i think this was usually 13.98 and i got this on sale for seven dollars looking really really great i have the purple flame i have the coral flame and i have the white flame 
Guys, I'm going to have to dig up my my lamb's ear. It's too much. I bought two lamb's ears, guys, three years ago. Just two. Like two in the 2.5 quart. And I have put them in the yard. And they have grown so much. I've divided so much. And it just keeps spreading. Not in a bad way. But enough where it's taking up the space that I need. So I might have to dig this out. Guys, the, the petite rose is doing great. As always, I've got my Leatrice back here. These are blooming purple Leatrice. And also back here, I have some Landini um, lilies. I've got some tiger lilies. I've got some stargazer lilies. A lot of lilies back here. And then also back here, guys, I have my summerific hibiscus that's finally coming out. And then this one here is not summerific. This one here is the Bloomables brand. I think it's, um, this one is white and it's come out by the Bloomables brand. Also in this area, guys, I have my Eryngium. Same like the, the, the Red Hot Poker, where I bought it thinking that it was going to bloom thinking it was going to bloom in the first year and it didn't and then this year guys it shot up i can't wait for these to bloom guys they're supposed to be purple and look at that they are all butted up from doing nothing that first year and you might have heard me complain in the video like this thing is not doing anything and if it doesn't do anything i'm going to pull it up and it must have heard me because it woke up and it is doing the thing here in 2024 guys i'm expecting blooms in the next uh you know at least the next two weeks and last week this one here actually was was shot it up and this one was still down here and then within a week it has put on a foot of growth guys let me know if you have eryngium and how it does in your yard i love their foliage too look at that so that's the foliage down here and then it shoots up absolutely beautiful more daylilies, guys. Never a shortage of daylilies in this yard. I have Stella d'Oro. I have all types of daylilies, guys. I've got a lot of perennial hibiscus. This is the, um, this was a Lowe's brand, I believe. And I have one here and I have another one here. So this is the second major bed, guys. So let me just pan so you can see. So you just saw the first main bed or the center bed. And then here we are in the second main bed. So let's get head over to my bare root roses area. Now guys, my roses are doing so great. I'm so, so happy. And I know you know, cause I talk about it a lot in the video, but the roses that I bought in February, Beer Root did a video on it, showed you guys what I bought, showed you me planting them, and they are doing absolutely amazing. This is Rio Samba. This is Gold Medal. This is Pink Peace. And look at this huge Mr. Lincoln. Just showing off. Absolutely showing off. I've got another one, Della Reese, that hasn't bloomed yet. This one is Oklahoma. Looking really, really great, guys. I'm so happy with how things turned out on the rose front. This one, I don't know what it is, and I've asked in my last video, I've checked the comments to see if anybody figured out what it was. This one is a white one with a buttery, creamy yellow. It smells like citrusy, it smells, it smells very citrusy, but I lost the tag for this, so I don't know what it is. This one is Gold Glow. Here we have Moonlight in Paris. So the, the roses are really, really happy, guys, and I'm happy because of it. Again, the roses I bought were only $9.97 at Walmart. This one is Heirloom. And finally, this one is Love and Peace. 
Here's another bed, guys. With the center, I have a summerific hibiscus. And surrounding that is a bunch of Stella de Oro daylilies. And also between that, we have some blue magic Dutch iris. Over back by the fence line, guys, I forgot to show you my um, autumn moonlight azalea that I bought. Again, a three gallon for, for $15 at Lowe's on clearance. And my favorite azalea is the autumn lily, which is a white with a little bit of a pink line on it. Again, more daylilies lining the beds. And this is my butterfly bushes. I have three of them. I have one, I have two, and three. Butterfly bushes need to get to a certain area, I mean a certain size before they bloom. So then once they do their first bloom, then I will cut it back and then let it bloom again. Because if I don't do that, then this thing will get really, really huge, take up a lot of space, and get damaged in the winds. Also back here, guys, more daylilies down there. These are all daylilies. And these are all on the fence line. I moved all those, um, you might have remembered that I actually had, um, what do I, what did I have here? Um, crepe myrtles. I had crepe myrtles, a Delta series crepe myrtles, and I moved them all. And I just put these recurve privet here because they are evergreen with the hope that this will grow up to at least five to six feet and it will you know create some sort of a barrier between me and my neighbor i've been working on a little project back here guys you know i've been looking for space and i found some space underneath this pear tree i actually planted some um hostas so I have some August moon hostas and some Patriot hostas that I put under here. It's still a work in progress. As you can see, it has not been mulched. It hasn't really been done too much to it. But I did put some plants in here already. I'm hoping that they do well. This is a really, really clay area, but it does stay shade to part shade. So certain things I can't put here, but I did end up buying some more of the original mop head hydrangeas that can't take the sun so i put them in like this dappled shade and i will check them out to see if they do well and if they don't then i have to move them because they need some sort of a sun they just can't take sun after 12 o'clock but this is a little area i'm still working on in the back of the yard i've got a lot of can lilies that again I bought five bags of can lilies two years ago, and from there I have a million. That no joke, guys. I have so many. I'm literally giving them away. Now this area here, I can't do too much for it because when I have my little uh, water issue, when the, when it rains a lot, and the water does come this way, right, and then it goes that way and it goes down. So I, that's why I put them there because they do like to stay moist. I still don't know what I'm gonna put underneath this tree. As you can see, I had something here. I had the hostas here, and I realized that that's not a good area. So I'm going to find some plants, or maybe I might put annuals here. I don't know yet. I try not to put annuals in the ground, but I've been having a hard time finding something to put under here because by 1 o'clock, this is burning up, and the hostas can't go here. This area here is still a work in progress, guys. This is all new space that I found that I need to clean up. Here I have a uh, chase tree. I have two chase trees that, again, $19 at Lowe's. And then I have my barberry here and my hibiscus here that I, that I planted. Here's a new area here that, again, I found space. Like, I've been looking for space, guys. And then now I find them, I'm not finding the plants that I'm looking for. But this area here, after 3 o'clock, this is kind of in the shade. So, again, that's the thing. I have the space now just looking for the plants. More daylilies under here. I wanted to put hostas here, but, again, it burns up too much. Here's where I end up putting all those Delta series 
grape myrtles that I mentioned that I was actually on the fence line. And they're not doing too great, guys, with the move. So I need to take care of them a little bit better. But again, I have a purple. I have this color here, which is the crepe myrtle Delta Eclipse. I have Delta Fusion. I have Delta Fusia, which are pink. And I have Delta Moonlight, which are white. I've got two more butterfly bushes right here. I think these are royal red. And my viburnum, my Chinese snowball viburnum, which is done for now. It actually blooms in the spring and the fall. So I'm really, really happy about that. I've heard really, really great things about this particular one here. I know they have the European, they have the Japanese, they have the Chinese, but this one here, guys, it gave me such lovely blooms back in March. Oh my goodness. Um, and finally, guys, I want to show you the edible garden. As you can, I don't know if you remember if you got a chance to look and see, but I did plant up my um my edible seeds so i have cucumbers i have bell peppers i have um cantaloupe i have green beans i have spinach i have strawberries i have blueberries i have butternut squash guys and most of them are beginning to show a little bit of movement so for example here's the garden bean which is the green bean and I've got movement here. Green beans are really beginning to show out. Not show out, but they, they actually are um, coming out. Cucumber. These were all planted, I believe, April 15th or 16th, one of them days. And once they get big enough, I will pull out and just leave the main one. So I'm really, really happy with how things look, guys. Here's the spinach. And here's the butternut squash. So guys, that's the garden. That's my little area here where I've been doing some little work on. This is where I do my hanging baskets. This is where I am working on little projects here. So the garden is looking really, really great, guys. I'm really, really happy with how things turned out. The well, last thing I want to show you is my hosta garden and my macrophylla hydrangea. They're all looking great, guys. Between Penny Mac, the original, Bloomstruck, and then, of course, I have my hosta garden. As you guys remember, all these hostas are doing really, really great. I've got different types of hostas in here, August Moon, Elegans, Stained Glass, Blue Hosta, Guacamole, Patriot, Rainforest Sunrise, Wide Brim, Lakeside Lily Tuft, First Frost, Diana Remembered, Royal Standard, all types of hostas in here, guys. Let me know what you think of my little tour. It is the end of April, and I'm really, really, really happy with how things turned out, guys. Please like, please share, please subscribe, and please remember to hit the notification bell to be alerted on my new videos, guys. I truly appreciate you all. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you so much for your likes, and thank you so much for all your, suggest your suggestions. I truly appreciate it. I try my best to read every comment and at least like it because sometimes I get so many comments and then I think I'm commenting on the same thing. I'm replying to the same comment twice and then missing the other one. So I'm going to make a better effort to be more mindful to reply to all the comments, guys. Thank you so much again and have a great day. Bye-bye.